Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the love of the Divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to a lasting life.
let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Alicia arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Alicia asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son and her husband is getting on in years. Alicia said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Alicia promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, are you aware that we who were baptized into G Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. 
death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin, died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives you a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, as we began now, the ordinary time of the church's year where we count off the Sundays and we return to the green vestments. If you remember last week's gospel, our Lord began to give his 12 apostles instructions for their very first mission that they were going to go out all by themselves without the Lord to preach the kingdom of God, to preach the message of Jesus. And today we hear the conclusion of those very, very hard instructions to hear. Our Lord is basically asking them before they leave, are you ready for this? Do you accept this mission? Are you worthy? The mission is not going to be some easy, fun road trip. It's going to be very difficult because they're going to be rejected and laughed at and mocked, perhaps even rocks thrown at them. And ultimately, of course, all except one will be killed for preaching the gospel. Are you worthy of this? Are you capable of doing this? Are you equal and ready to do this? The apostles had to understand this was not going to be a fun thing to do, but an also important one. People's souls and their destiny of eternity 
is banked on their words and their example. This reading is one of the many reminders that Christianity is not some sort of nice social club to join. It's not a very feel-good religion to have. It's not some sort of easy title that gains us to eternity because simply we say, I'm a Catholic or I'm a Christian. It's certainly not a passive activity. So the Lord is telling the apostles nothing or no one or any commitment, no love, no desire can be more important than the task at hand of preaching the message of God. And he went on to assure them that it will cost them their lives. But only in doing so will they find happiness in this life and meaning in this life. Because of that, are you really and ready to accept that cross, that daily cross of living out that Christian message? That Christianity is not just an hour or a week on a Sunday, but it hits us Monday morning when we go back to work or, please God, in September, back to school or in our family life. Start there. But our mission as a Christian is to do the very same. We too are called by the virtue of our baptism we too are given the very same instruction that these apostles were given. We are called to bring the gospel message into the marketplace, into our life, into the world outside. Called to bring the message of hope, love, to our very sorry world right now. And when we do that, we too will be laughed at. We too will be mocked. We too will be having names called at us as being crazy and old-fashioned. Perhaps even rocks will be thrown at us as well. We will be rejected. Perhaps even by our own family, by our children or our grandchildren. They are all at your generation. Are you willing and ready to accept the invitation of Christ? to preach the message of the gospel into the world today. For this is what the Christian vocation is all about. We are called to the very same kind of dedication that the original 12 apostles were. We're called to do the same. By the way we live our life, by the words that come forth from our mouth, do they see and hear, not us, but do they see and hear Christ through you? Because remember the words of the gospel, whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. So by the way we live, the example of our life, the words of our mouths, by the way we live, that should draw people not to ourselves as a sort of cult, but rather we should, they should draw ourselves and those to the very life of God himself. When people see you, do they say to themselves, there's something about you that I want. There's something where you live your life and the happiness and the peace that you have that I want. Are you willing to say, it's not me, it's because I believe in Jesus, because I live his lifestyle. I live in the truth. So as followers of Christ, our very love for one another fits uniquely into our mission. Rather than limit our focus or limit our love or limit our care for certain people, the Christian love, the Christian hospitality is extended to all people. It was the Christians who loved one another that changed the world once before. It was the Christian love of one another 
that ended the barbarism and the brutality and the violence of the ancient world. And don't think those days are written into a history book. Barbarians are running around still to this day. And the violence and the hatred that we see every day on the news. Because we don't love one another. Because people try to live their life without God and think they themselves are God. They determine history. They determine what's real. We see the effects today. Maybe God is calling us once again to change the world. Maybe God is calling all of us once again to bring love into this world and end the violence and the hatred that's so much a part of our society today. Love one another as I have loved you. It changed the world once before. Perhaps we need to do it again. And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And so now we come to the Lord with our concerns confident that he always hears our prayers. For international leaders, that they work together to combat the virus and reduce levels of infection everywhere, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our benefactors and friends, that they may experience the power of God's grace in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Peter Blickley and Danielle Kushner, who received the sacrament of matrimony this Friday. As they begin their new life together, may they be blessed with many graces through the power of the Holy Family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish, who have gone before us in faith and love, especially Mary and Dolan, may they receive the reward of their goodness. And let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Veronica McLinsky. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of all life and love, we offer you our prayers this day. Hear us and grant them which we ask in faith and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and the archangels, the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From the history of faith. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also 
our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, St. Margaret, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait your blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, Forever and ever. Amen. So the Lord be with you always. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that this Friday, the parish offices will be closed in honor of the 4th of July celebration on Friday. Just a reminder, the parish offices are open every day from 9 until 4.30, Monday to Thursday, and Fridays 9 until noon. Also a reminder that this Mass is live streamed every Sunday, so for perhaps someone in the family or whoever feels uncomfortable coming to Mass, you can tell them that uh, we do have Mass that's live streamed here at 10.30. Also registration for our religious education program is ongoing. If you haven't already done so, we ask you to please register online or call the religious education office. That information is on our website as well. We are indeed planning to hold classes starting in September, so all that information will come forward as we go along. Again, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for all that you do for our parish, most particularly supporting our parish by your weekly envelopes and your support. We help us to continue to do what we do best here at St. Margaret's, which is serving one another and loving one another the best way that we can. Just to let you know again, to remind you that in between the Masses, the church is sanitized and um, everything is washed down and sanitized for, for protection. Um, again, if you feel uncomfortable coming to Mass, please, the, the obligation to attend Mass is still suspended, so uh, you don't have to come. But to just let you know that we try to keep you as safe as we can uh, when you're here in God's house. So as always, have a wonderful Sunday with you and your family. God bless you and please God, we'll see all of you again here next week. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits we prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And also what we do now, we're singing the Salve Regina, which is a Latin prayer, the Hail Holy Queen. As you know, our Blessed Lady is the Queen of the North America and South America. She's the patron of our country. We ask her and pray to her to help us and help our country to restore sanity and to protect the men and women who serve us in the military and our police and fire departments. So we sing now the Hail Holy Queen. <laughs> Salve Regina.